Today's episode on See Through News is all about seagrass and we'll be travelling to Tor Bay on South Devon's coast to take a closer look. But first, over to my environmental correspondent, Roberta John. Resembling bladed grass, seagrass meadows grow in shallow parts of coastlines and can be found on all continents except Antarctica. Seagrass is understated and some an unknown ecosystem which, like trees, also have the capability of storing carbon. Unlike trees, seagrass has no stomata and instead diffuses carbon through a thin cuticle layer, capturing carbon 35 times faster than tropical rainforests. Its high turnover of leaves and location allows it to trap other debris, making it an extremely effective method of carbon storing. Despite only covering 0.1% of the sea floor, it is responsible for 11% of the organic carbon buried in the ocean, otherwise known as blue carbon. It is not just its carbon storing abilities that make seagrass so important. Seabeds with seagrass support 30 times more animals than those without. 50 species of fish live in or visit UK seagrass meadows including commercially valuable fish such as cod and plates, as well as endangered species too. Seagrass also offers structural support. The roots protect rock sediments and help prevent coastal land erosion by regulating ocean currents and wave energy. However, in 2014, seagrass meadows were found to be the most rapidly depleting ecosystems on Earth, disappearing at a rate of 7% a year. Estimates suggest we lose an area of seagrass around the same size as two football pitches every single hour. In the UK, we have lost over 90% of our seagrass ecosystem so far. Human impacts such as destructive fishing, climate change, tourism and pollution can all be blamed for their decline. We found ourselves in Tall Bay, a large natural harbour and tourist destination. Research is varied, but Tor Bay is lucky enough to have a total of approximately 80 hectares of seagrass meadows scattered across its bay. Now considered a national importance, we're excited to potentially see some of the seagrass in action. Here at Fishcombe, there is approximately 2.2 acres of seagrass. That's nearly over one football pitch worth. You wouldn't think underneath us was a carbon sink. Us being good news reporters, we thought we'd take the plunge and have a closer look so you can see it for yourselves at home. Torbay seagrass's importance has been acknowledged by Torbay Coast and Countryside Trust. They've declared voluntary no anchoring zones and mobile fishing gear is not permitted. The biggest threat to seagrass is people and not knowing where it is or how important it is. I can't believe I would never have known that was there until I got in myself. Having been to three main sites in Torbay, we saw little to no public information provided. Boys in the summer indicate speed restrictions and no anchoring zones. A couple of mooring boys are seagrass safe and are only found at Fishcombe. There is no other management methods being used. This leads us to the question, is this enough? We go and talk to a PhD student who we hope can shed some more light on the issue of seagrass. In Wales, Seagrass Ocean Rescue Project is doing the UK's largest seagrass restoration yet. They are harvesting and cultivating seeds put into sand-filled biodegradable bags on the seabed, so the seedlings can then take root and grow. The aim is to restore two hectares of seagrass. Torbay is part of the Community Seagrass Initiative, but is yet to take similar actions. If Torbay could mirror Wales's restoration schemes, Torbay could expand its seagrass meadows. In order for restoration projects to be successful, we need to stop ongoing human stressors, which are detrimental to seagrass, which requires education and more stringent regulations. 
Therefore, government and public support is needed to take action on what has been identified as a vital ecosystem and method of carbon storage. Back to you, Eve. Thanks, Bertie. We'll see you next week for another episode of See Through News.